So you're thinking about moving to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. In this video, we're going to discuss the top 10 neighborhoods in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Not only am I going to share stats and information for each neighborhood, but we're also gonna jump in the car and I'm gonna show you real footage driving through each neighborhood so you can see for yourself what it's like. Let's get after it right now. If this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything about Fort Lauderdale, Florida, make sure to subscribe down below as well as tap on the bell for notifications so you're the first to be notified about the current real estate market in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. My name is Adela Phillipson. We get calls, texts, and emails every day from people all over the world just like you looking for help to make their move to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and we absolutely love it. Whether you're thinking about moving here in nine days or 90 days, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email so we can help make your move nice and smooth to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Let's get into this. So as I mentioned, we're gonna be talking about the top 10 neighborhoods in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and I'm going to share with you the stats, data, information about each particular neighborhood, as well as taking you with me in the vehicle and driving around so you can see exactly what it's like. So before we jump into my vehicle, I want to share with you on my computer, Fort Lauderdale, so you have an understanding of what's nearby and more importantly, where each particular neighborhood is that I'm going to be showing you. So this is Fort Lauderdale for the most part. The reason it kind of curves here is because we have two other cities, Oakland Park, as well as Wilton Manors. But this is the downtown area. This right here is Las Olas Boulevard. And you can actually access the beach from Southeast 5th, 17th, uh, Las Olas Boulevard, Sunrise Boulevard, as well as Oakland Park and Commercial. Now, Fort Lauderdale is for the most part located on the east of the 95 freeway. And if you want to go to Palm Beach, that would just be north this way. And then Miami would be just south to give you an idea of the distance between the cities. If you wanted to go from, let's say, Fort, Lauder Fort Lauderdale to Miami, And it would be right now, as you can see, there is some traffic, but that would be about 52 minutes um, and it's coming up about traffic time. So that's pretty good. Otherwise, it'll be about 45 minutes. And if you wanted to maybe go to, let's say, Palm Beach. Whoops, let's delete that. Palm Beach. It's about similar um, time frame. In this case, it's an hour and five minutes. It's just a little further north. And in case you wanna see Boca, it's just right there. And to give you an idea, and they actually have some good shopping there at Boca Town Center. Boca Raton, that is just about 32 or 27, oh, 27 minutes on the train, but 32, 32 minutes. Now let's get back to other things you can actually do in Fort Lauderdale. Some great things to know about Fort Lauderdale is the airport is located on the southern part between Fort Lauderdale and Hollywood. It's technically Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport, which is great because not only can you travel in the United States very easily, get to New York, LA, um, even Seattle, but you can also catch a flight to London, Paris, Amsterdam, and so forth. They, the uh, port itself, in case you have ever been, it, this is where the cruise liners are. So it's very close to the actual airport. You don't have to travel far. And this is where a lot of the boats come in and out, Port Everglades. Um, so if you actually happen to have a waterfront property or you have a boat, uh, this is the way that you would actually get out onto the Atlantic Ocean. Some of the other great things about Fort Lauderdale is not only is there a country club here, we also have Hugh Birch, Hugh Taylor Birch State Park, excuse me, located right around here. And there's also the Bonnet House Museum and Garden, great attraction. We do have a very large 
park here called Holiday Park. So if you have children who want to play soccer, football, or maybe even adults who like sports such as tennis or pickleball, even adult frisbee, that's where a lot of the activities um, happen. There are other parks that do facilitate those sports. This one just tends to be one of the bigger ones. This is downtown where a lot of the action happens, a lot of restaurants, a lot of shops, great tourist site. Um, and along here, Los Olas Boulevard is generally where a lot of tourists like to go. And then the hotels are just right around this particular area. In case you like hockey, the Florida Panthers play over here in the arena for their games. What's really wonderful and a lot of residents are looking forward to is that the city is building within Holiday Park a new ice rink that is meant to be the practice facility for the Florida Panthers. But residents are excited because of course, we will have access to the facility. The public will be able to use it for uh, hockey practice, you know, children, anybody who wants to learn um, ice skating, um, it's just going to be a lot of great sports, um, you know, at our disposal. Now, this particular freeway, the 595, which eventually converts to the 75 freeway, is the freeway that goes all the way from the east coast to the west coast of Florida. So if you want to go to Naples for maybe even a day trip, which I've done on multiple occasions, Naples is just an hour and a half. So you can leave at like nine, be there by 1030, spend most of the day, come back, leave at six, be back by 730. A very easy commute. And in case you like Costco or Ikea, Ikea is actually located over here at the end. I would say it's just if you're going to be roughly around this area and you get on the 95 freeway all the way to the 595, that's just about 25 minute drive. And then Costco is roughly around this area. So they're not far uh, distance from each other if you wanted to do some, you know, big shopping out there. In case you like to roll the dice, there is a casino over here. It's the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. The hotel itself is shaped like a guitar. And even at nighttime, regardless of where you may be, you will see a green beaming light into the sky. That is where it's located. Um, they also have entertainment there, such as concerts, comedy shows. There are a lot of activities and it's not far from Fort Lauderdale. Now that you have an overview of Fort Lauderdale itself, let's go closer. I'm gonna show you the neighborhoods. Number 10 on the list we have, first neighborhood we're gonna take you through is Tarpon River. Tarpon River, it's a neighborhood located just south of downtown, but it's not far, so it's very easy to go into town and have that nightlife uh, lifestyle as well as having a nice lunch with friends. But Tarpon River is basically located on the west side of US-1. Uh, and Tarpon River is very eclectic. It does still have that old Florida historical feel, but it is very diverse with its architecture. At this point in time, when you're driving through the neighborhood, you will see Mediterranean style homes, colonial homes, as well as modern, contemporary, and still some of those old Florida homes. So it's very mixed. They do have a lot of trees in the area, so it's very lush and green. And what's interesting is when you are in the neighborhood, you almost feel like you're in a completely different area without realizing that downtown is just up the street on US-1. So this is Tarpon River. As I was mentioning, it is on the south of downtown. It is west of US-1. We also call it Federal Highway. And US-1 goes from north to south or south to north but it's located just below downtown area. If you don't feel like going into downtown and kind of crossing over New River, Andrews Avenue has a lot of restaurants, um, even along the water here, they have nightlife. There's restaurants along this US one as well. So there's plenty to do. It's very dog friendly. They do have, of course, this park. It's very walkable. 
If you do like beer, they even have Tarpon River Brewery that you can check out. And Publix right here is the grocery store, primarily in the Southeast region. You may know some like Ralph's, Kroger's, um, Pavilions, that kind of grocery store. So you have Publix right here. There's also Paisan's home of Frankie's Meatballs. That is a huge spot for locals. So there's a lot to do within Tarpon River and it's very residential. So it's a great place without having to be directly in downtown. So let's just jump in my car. I'm gonna show you Tarpon River. Now, Tarpon River's schools, according to niche.com, are B rated. The total population is 3,390. The medium home value is 378,000, and 52% of residents own their home there. The median household income is 76,000 and family with children is just about 10%. The next neighborhood is Rio Vista. Now Rio Vista is still south of downtown. In this case, it's located on the east side of US-1. So you can just cross the street and go from Tarpon River over to Rio Vista. Rio Vista is somewhat similar, yet it does have a bit larger homes as well as a few more waterfront properties located there and still have that lush landscape. A lot of trees, so great shade if you're going for a walk, a jog, maybe taking your dogs out for a stroll. It's very, very neighborhood, community-centered. Um, and it's, what's great there is that you have a lot of outdoor activities you can still do, whether you can go over to the recreational park and play some basketball, or maybe even go to a fitness center, such as going to uh, do yoga or go to the gym, anything like that is just right there. And still you are within minutes of downtown, so you can have have that city vibe just minutes away from your doorstep. So as I mentioned, Rio Vista is just across US-1 from Tarpon River, but in this case, it's going to be the east side. Uh, Rio Vista itself does offer dry lot properties in this section, and then you have more waterfront properties, especially along these aisles. It's very lush, as I mentioned. What's really beautiful when you are in Rio Vista, you can kind of cruise through these streets, very lush landscaping, gorgeous, very walkable. And again, you're not far from downtown. Downtown is just right here in the northern part, so you can just cross the drawbridge over New River directly into downtown and still have that lifestyle, as I mentioned. But along this entire US-1 section, you have a lot of restaurants. In fact, you even have Canyon, and you also have uh, Whole Foods just down the street from uh, along US-1 and like LA Fitness Gyms, yoga studios. Uh, there's a lot right within Rio Vista and you don't have to travel far. What a lot of residents 
enjoy about living in this neighborhood is Lauderdale Yacht Club. It's a very friendly, family friendly, I should say, um, place if you want to socialize and you are a boater and just want to meet a lot of other boaters. And it tends to be less expensive club compared to like the country club, for example. So if that is what you like, definitely check it out. According again to niche.com, the schools in Rio Vista are B rated. The population is 3,527. The median home value is 1 million. 63% of homeowners own their home there. Median household income is 167,000. Families with children is about All right, the eighth neighborhood we're going to take you through today is Harbor Beach. Harbor Beach. Now, Harbor Beach is definitely an upscale lifestyle, luxury waterfront homes, and it's just minutes away from Los Olas Boulevard. Harbor Beach, you would go through a gate, and once you're there, it just opens up to beautiful sites of homes, large boats, luxury boats, massive yachts, and you constantly have these little bridges that take you over the waterways. Now living in that particular neighborhood means that you are just within minutes of the Atlantic Ocean. The Port of Everglades is pretty much nearby. So if you were to own a home there, you'd get on your boat, go through the water, intercoastal waterway and out into the ocean the easiest, fastest access in Fort Lauderdale. So here is Harbor Beach. It's rather small, but as I mentioned, it's just minutes away from Las Olas. It's not far. This would be just about five minute drive up and you actually have the entire beach access along this way. And if you want to go to downtown, have that nightlife, it's not far either. But for uh, Harbor Beach residents, there are a lot of things to do. In fact, there are a lot of restaurants here. Since this is the port, they do kind of have to service, you know, people who are working there or even tourists getting on and off cruise ships. So there's a lot of entertainment just right here on Southeast 17th Street without having to go directly into downtown. As a resident in Harbor Beach, these homes are very exclusive luxurious waterfront properties because they do have the wider canal so people have their bigger yachts um you know uh on their property um but what's really great about this particular section since you have so many hotels a lot of the hotels have restaurants there so it's very easy to just you know go walking and wine and dine without having to get into a vehicle all right, so again, this is Harbor Beach. Let's get into the vehicle. The schools in Harbor Beach are B rated. The median home value is 1.1 million. 88% of residents own their home. The median 
household income is one hundred and seventy thousand, and families with children that reside there is about nine percent. All right, number seven neighborhood we're gonna take you through is Coley Hammock. Coley Hammock is a smaller neighborhood located in downtown Fort Lauderdale. And this is really where if you want a single family home and not the condo high rise living. So it is walkable. It's located right between Broward Boulevard and Las Olas Boulevard. So for example, if you were to own a home in Coley Hammock, it would just be five minutes to the nearest cafe shop right there in, along Las Olas Boulevard. So it's very, very convenient. The homes there tend to be a bit smaller. You'll end up finding a lot of more art deco and craftsman style homes there, maybe possibly some like old Florida homes. But a lot of the homes generally tend to be either knocked down and you know modern homes being built or perhaps taking a uh, ranch style home and they're making them into two-story but it's an excellent location if you're not wanting to get in a vehicle um, but yet have your own house without having to purchase a condo and get that downtown city living so coley hammock is a great option if that's what you're looking for prime location so this is Coley Hammock. It is rather small compared to some of the other neighborhoods. It's just south of Broward Boulevard as well as east of US-1 and Los Olas Boulevard does cut through here. There is a nice little park which residents do enjoy, Coley Hammock Park, and you can actually watch some of those boats, whether it's Jungle Queen cruise, yacht, sailboats, coming through so it's very picturesque to even have like a picnic there but these homes are uh, generally single family residences you'll have a mix of some uh, town homes and then more condos kind of in the southern part of Coley Hammock but if you are looking for a residential um, home single family home and want that downtown vibe without having the condo Coley Hammock is a really great option. Since Coley Hammock is located right here, not only can you go and in, walk into downtown, but if you wanted to take a stroll to the beach, I would say that's about a 15 minute walk. So it's not far, it's quite enjoyable. Watch the sunrise or sunset and you have all these restaurants along the beach side or you can enjoy some of the restaurants along the waterway right here on along New River. Let's jump into the vehicle so I can show you the neighborhood. The schools in Coley Hammock are B rated. The median home value is 550,000. 54% of residents own their home. Median household income is 147,000 and families with children is about 13%.
Six neighborhood Galt Mile. Galt Mile is exactly a mile long and it starts on Oakland Park Boulevard and goes all the way north until Fort Lauderdale ends and that meets Lauderdale by the Sea. Lauderdale by the Sea is its own separate city um, but on Galt Mile that is if you would want a condo and a high-rise and have more of a private beachfront. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that the public can't walk on there it's just very difficult for them to because if there were if there was to be um, a pedestrian on a1a there's no direct access from the street onto the beach so they would actually have to go on oakland park boulevard access the beach from there and then walk north but usually they don't bother because parking in itself around that area is difficult so people who want more private, quiet, and really just the residents who live in those high rises are the ones who are typically found along that beach side. So if that's what you're looking for, you can definitely see that. But most people who live in those high rises, it tends to be their secondary residence or third residence investment property. Um, most of them tend to be retired. The population is a bit more retired just because they don't want the maintenance of a house, you know, and landscaping. So this is actually where Galt Mile is. It's on the east side of A1A. Uh, now, as I had mentioned, if you, the, the public doesn't necessarily have access unless they wanted to get access from Oakland Park Boulevard and end up walking. But if there were to be any pedestrians along A1A, they cannot cross over in between the buildings to get to the beach. So it tends to be much more quiet, primarily just residents that you'll come across if you were to reside there. But what's great about Galt Mile is that you don't necessarily need a vehicle to get around. There is a lot of shopping within walking distance. Just to give you an idea, there's this whole area right here. So for example, there is Bow Campers Sports Bar and Grill, very popular. There is even a hotel. If you want to come to Fort Lauderdale and check it out, you can definitely stay here. Great view for boats going by. But this entire section right here, they have a lot of restaurants, a lot of stores. Um, they even have some kids art camps located there as well as fishtails if you want to enjoy some um, live music and drinks and go dancing. They even have pane dolce, which is one of my favorites. They make the pastries in every morning, so I highly recommend going really early um, to get them nice and fresh. They have some coffee shops. So here is Pana Dolce that I mentioned to you. You can actually even see it from Oakland Park Boulevard when you're right here. They also have Patricia's, very popular Italian restaurant located there. Um, and then FL's Bar and Lounge, they, they strictly just do alcohol, so don't go there hungry. That's just kind of a place if you wanna hang out and have some drinks. So let's get into the vehicle so I can show you around the neighborhood. The schools, they're A rated. Population is 1,015. Medium home value is 245,000. 93% own their home. Median household income is 62,000. And families with children is about 1%.
The fifth neighborhood we're going to cover is Dolphin Isle. Dolphin Isle. Now this one I particularly love. I think it's really fun. And Dolphin Isle, they are situated on the east side of the Intracoastal Waterway, squeezed between the beach and the Intracoastal. And believe it or not, they are just north of Hugh Birch Taylor State Park. So they have a lot of activities they can do, whether they own a waterfront property, whether they feel like going to the beach, or whether they want to go to the park, they have their own private access. And on that side, they don't necessarily need a vehicle. They have a lot of restaurants within walking distance. They have Mastro's, they have Shooters, they're currently building a new grocery store there. Um, and they also, uh, there are condo high rises on the beach side that also have restaurants for the public at the bottom. So there's a lot within Dolphin Isles for residents who live there. So th this is Dolphin Isles, this is where it's located. What's great about Dolphin Isles, it is, it's squeezed between the Intracoastal Waterway as well as the beach. So whether you have a waterfront property and wanna enjoy having that uh, boat lifestyle or wanna walk over to the beach, it's so easy. There are uh, condo buildings here as well as hotels such as the Pelican Grand. They have a wonderful Sunday brunch. Um, there's even a sandbar if you, you know, wanna grab a slice of pizza and some beer, but they're all located right here so you don't have to go far. They also have shooters as well as Mastro's located on the northern part. And as far as outdoor activities, they have access, private access, believe it or not, um, I believe you just go to the city to show them your residence and you get a fob into a gate so you can access it directly from here. Um, but they can enjoy the state park. It's not far as well as enjoying park and ocean over here. And like I mentioned, if you want to rent jet skis, kayaks, anything like that for the ocean, it's very close by. Now let's get into the vehicle so I can show you around the neighborhood. Dolphin Isle schools are A rated. The population is 772. The medium home value is 740,000. 100% of residents own their homes. Median household income is 80,000. And families with children is about 10%.
The fourth neighborhood is Seven Isles. Seven Isles has high-end real estate and is home to many well-known celebrities, politicians, and business leaders, and is great for those who appreciate exclusivity as well as luxury. You can access it right off of Las Olas Boulevard, which means downtown is just within minutes, as well as easy access to the beach. Now, Seven Isles is known to be more of the expensive aisles in the area. You have Nermi Isles, Hendrix Isles, Venice Isles, which primarily have condos. And then you also have Riviera Isles and Los Olas Isles. But what makes Seven Isles unique is the fact that the actual properties and aisles themselves run from east to west. So you normally have north and south exposure in the front and back of your home. So here's Seven Isles, as I mentioned, this is a very exclusive area and there is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven aisles. Most of them are waterfront properties with the exception of this triangle. Those are dry lot properties, but a lot of well-known celebrities as well as politicians and business leaders um, do live here. They are very extravagant and it's more desirable because of the direction the aisles actually face running from east to west. What's great about this location is you're right off of Las Olas Boulevard. So it's just walking distance to the beach from here. And you have all these hotels along the beach side. So get walking over, you know, it's just a quick car ride over to the restaurants at the bottom of these hotels. So it's very fun. And then you can actually have easy access to the downtown um, nightlife, you know, lifestyle. So again, this is Seven Isles. Let's go ahead and jump into the vehicle so you can see the neighborhood. Seven Isles schools are B rated. The population is 224. Median home value is two million. 100% of residents own their home. Median household income is 225,000. And families with children is about 16%. The top third neighborhood in Fort Lauderdale we're going to discuss is Coral Ridge. Now, Coral Ridge is very interesting because at the ends of the of Bayview Drive, which is one of the two streets that runs from south to north, there are two malls, one on each end. On the further south point, you have the Galleria Mall, which a developer is coming and redoing it more into an indoor outdoor type of mall and just completely revamping it so residents are very excited about that and on the northern part you have coral ridge mall that one happens to be more like target tj maxx home goods marshall's you have jamba juice subway claire's old navy 
um, you have a grocery store there, whereas the Galleria Mall, that's more jewelry and chocolates, uh, H&M, you have Macy's there, um, just kind of more shops. So it's so Coral Ridge is conveniently located. Not only does it have the malls on the ends of Bayview Drive, but the street parallel behind Coral Ridge, which is US 1, you have everything you can think of. All the furniture shops, all the car dealerships, all the grocery stores, including Publix, Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, and Fresh Market. Fresh Market is kind of like an era one back from Los Angeles, in case you're familiar with it. It's more upscale, more expensive land than Whole Foods, but then you also have a lot of different restaurants as well as your big box stores, including Best Buy, again, we have Target nearby. You even have like Starbucks, Starbucks and Krispy Kremes. Um, so anything and everything that you need is located just around the corner here in Coral Ridge. This is Coral Ridge. Coral Ridge is squeezed between Oakland Park Boulevard as well as Sunrise Boulevard. What's really great about this particular location is you do have Hugh Birch Taylor state park just right here so it's not far there's a lot of activities you can do such as kayaking going for a stroll bike ride through um, the pathways here as well as uh, going to park and ocean it's like a cafe restaurant they have live music on friday evenings you can also end up renting kayaks paddle boards surfboards and jet skis if you want to have fun in the atlantic ocean um, and then right along this section of US-1, everything you can think of is located right here, as well as at this end, the northern part and the southern part, there are malls. You have Coral Ridge Mall here and then the Galleria Mall here. So taking kind of a closer look here at the Coral Ridge Mall, you have, for example, Target, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Home Goods, Jamba Juice, Old Navy, Claire's, so many other shops. And then you also have the AMC Theater. Um, here along US1, you have everything from Chick-fil-A, Starbucks, CPK, McDonald's, uh, Diner. You also have all your grocery stores from Publix to Trader Joe's, uh, Fresh Market, Whole Foods. This is a shopping center as well right here where you have Michael's, Just Salad, Chipotle, uh, Dick's Sporting Goods, Sephora. Um, you even have fitness places, whether it's Pure Bar, Orange Theory, um, you know, Ulta Beauty, everything is right along here. And you have many other restaurants, whether it's J. Mark's, a Cuban place, Cafe Vico. And then you also have another movie theater right over here. And then the Galleria Mall is located right here where you have H&M, Macy's, T-Mobile, the Apple Store. Um, so everything is within driving distance. You also have George English Park. They actually have a boat park there. So if you do have, uh, for example, a single family home and your boat is parked in the driveway, you would just come to George English and put it in the water for you to enjoy the boat. This is Coral Ridge. Let's go ahead and get in the vehicle so I can show you the neighborhood. Coral Ridge schools are B rated. Population is 4,623. Median home value is 730,000. 73% of residents own their home. Median household income is 123,000. And families with children is about 20%.
Number two neighborhood in Fort Lauderdale, Coral Ridge Country Club Estates. Coral Ridge Country Club Estates. Now, Coral Ridge Country Club, which is a country club, is located right in the middle of this neighborhood. And not only that, but within the country club, the club itself sold part of their land to developer, and this particular developer built the enclave so you kind of have a small little community small little neighborhood within the neighborhood which i find very interesting but a lot of the homes along the country club have beautiful views overlooking the golf course and the neighborhood itself also still has waterfront properties now this neighborhood is located just north of Coral Ridge, so they do still have access to the Coral Ridge Mall and all the other shops, as I had previously mentioned, located along US-1. So still, they can go to all the furniture stores, dealerships, Whole Foods, you know, grocery shopping, Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, um, food, Fresh Market, and then they also have uh, CPK, Starbucks, Krispy Kreme, everything is, is, is there. So it's a great location. This is Coral Ridge Country Club Estates. And as you can see, right in the middle is Coral Ridge Country Club. In case you are interested, not only do they do golf, they also have tennis and social memberships. What's really interesting about Coral Ridge Country Club is that it does have one 18-hole golf course plus a nine-hole, which is executive. And what the country club did a while back is they actually sold uh, part of their land and to developers and the develop developers came in and created the enclave. So it's this tiny community located within the actual uh, golf course itself within Coral Ridge Country Club. Just to point it out, you can kind of see here it's under construction. Now a lot of it has been recently developed and there is a uh, guarded gates here for security and they all have beautiful views of the Reese 9 golf course on this section of the country club. Coral Ridge Country Club Estates does also have the uh, mall right here with Target and everything, as well as the AMC Theater. So a lot of locals like to go there. Um, but you also do have a great strip right here along Oakland Park Boulevard. So I would highly recommend if you want the best Kung Pao in Fort Lauderdale. It will be a bit pricey, but it's Rainbow Palace just right here on the corner. Across the street, you also have Cafe Seville and Las Vegas Cuban cuisine is also really great. Do not judge the restaurants from the exterior. Go in, you'll be very happy you went. They also have a lot of restaurants along US-1 right here. And Coral Ridge Country Club does have a great uh, park. Um, they actually even have like a baseball field, a lot of families. It's a very popular spot. Coral Ridge not only offers the dry lot properties, as you can see, but they do have a sliver along here, the uh, Intracoastal Waterway, if you're looking for a waterfront property. Now let's get into the vehicle so I can show you around the neighborhood. Coral Ridge Country Club Estate schools are B rated. The population is 5,086. Median home value is $542,000. 73% of residents own their home. 
Median household income, 100,000. And families with children, about 14%. Top number one neighborhood in Fort Lauderdale, Victoria Park. Now, Victoria Park is great. It's located just north of downtown. If you live on the southern part of Victoria Park, you can still walk to downtown to Las Olas Boulevard because it's just north of Coley Hammock as well. So it's a prime location. What's wonderful about Victoria Park is not just its walkability, but they also have Holiday Park located within the neighborhood. So if you like act outdoor activity, whether it's playing any kind of sports, tennis, pickleball, baseball, soccer, adult frisbee, it's just it, right there. Um, so its location overall is terrific. It's not far to get to the beach from there and it tends to be a bit more family oriented it's a wonderful neighborhood very shady especially victoria park boulevard it's just gorgeous so here is victoria park this one is east of us1 and just to point out us1 merges with sunrise in this small section and then it kind of curves continuing continuing on north. But if you are a resident in Victoria Park, as I mentioned, there is Holiday Park. They are building that ice rink, the stadium. Um, they even have Parker Playhouse located here. A lot of sporting uh, fields, soccer field, football field. They have tennis courts, pickleballs, and you can actually access the beach along Sunrise Boulevard, or if you happen to be in the southern part, you can access the beach from Las Olas. Generally, this tends to be a bit more crowded because that's where tourists go, and this tends to be a bit more quiet. Um, Victoria Park, great location because downtown is right here, and you can see overall it tends to be much larger. It's still very picturesque. I love taking a drive through North Victoria Park Boulevard sometimes when there is traffic along US 1. It just kind of makes the drive nice and very serene. Um, you know, it's just beautiful going through Victoria Park. So again, this is Victoria Park. Let's go ahead and jump into the vehicle so I can show you the neighborhood. Victoria Park schools are B rated. The population is 7,520. Median home value is 546,000. 41% of residents own their home. Median household income is 80,000. Families with children is about 12%.